Hello everyone, today we're gonna take a look at the Embernic RG Nano. And I believe that although this console is very small, it gives a new purpose to old retro games. When you buy it, you're gonna get this super tiny carrying case. It is pretty solid and definitely does a good job at protecting the console. Here is the box for the RG Nano and it's super simple, there's not much detail here. Here is the manual, it is super small. You also get this keychain which feels super premium. Here's the RG Nano in the blue color. And it doesn't come with a screen protector. On the bottom you get the speakers, on the side you get an SD card slot and a power button. On the top you have two shoulder buttons and a USB Type-C port for charging. You will also get a charging cable and a headphone jack adapter. Right out of the box I spotted something that I didn't like. The screen is curved on the edges. And this curve will make it very hard to apply a screen protector in the console. Unlike the 353P which has a flat screen and the screen protector is curved. And here is a size comparison. Here's the RG Nano, here's a Dreamcast VMU, here's the 8-bit 202, and here's a Game Boy Advance cartridge. And though it's very similar to the Dreamcast VMU, there is a few differences. The VMU buttons are made of rubber and the D-pad is a disc D-pad. On the RG Nano, you have a cross D-pad and the buttons are made of plastic. On the RG Nano, the buttons have a good travel distance and on the VMU, they have a pretty short travel. The D-pad has a good pivot in the center and it feels pretty easy to move it in all directions. The screen is bigger than the VMU screen too. And overall the dimensions look pretty much the same. When storing the device in the carrying case, you can put the keychain on the carrying case itself or directly on the RG Nano. And I like to keep the keychain on the RG Nano because you can use it as a finger strap. It's perfect to avoid dropping it accidentally. This middle section of the keychain is made of iron and it will rust over time. But the console itself is made of aluminum and you won't have this problem. And you can still store it in the carrying case like this to avoid damaging the screen. One of the biggest advantages of the RG Nano is its boot time. It will initialize much faster than other Ambernic consoles.
When you turn it on for the first time, the first thing you must do is set the time. Then you'll get to this watch screen, and look how detailed this screen is. The brightness is very strong, the pixels are very sharp, and overall the screen looks fantastic. On this screen, pressing start will bring you to the main menu. Here you have emulators, games, media, retroarch, which are emulators too, but it runs a bit different. Then you have settings and applications. If you press and hold the power button, it will go back to the watch. And pressing power again will shut it down completely. If you decide to leave it in the watch screen, it will shut down itself after a while. Let's jump to the input tester to check the D-pad and buttons. And here you have the same quality of D-pad that Embernic has. The diagonals are easy to hit and it feels responsive doing any kind of motion. The same goes for all of the other buttons. On the Games tab, you have some ports running natively. Get ready. But this is just for showing the capabilities of the console. Not all games here are good, like this Bomberman Sokoban clone. There is a video player, which is pretty okay. and a music player. You can also change the skin to one of the many options available. There is also a bunch of wallpapers. And you can easily transfer files from the PC to the device. Just plug the USB cable and select this option on the menu. When you're done, you can eject the USB. And there is also a charging LED on the USB port to let you know it's charging.
Here's a test with a headphone jack adapter. Alternatively, if you didn't like this launcher, you can change to a different one. Just choose this option in the menu. This launcher is more simple and easier to navigate. And if you lose the manual, there is a written version here. Now let's talk about the games. There is a ton of emulators here, and it has enough power to run any game here flawlessly. What impressed me the most in this console is the screen quality. Just look at the sharpness of the pixels. And the screen is cut in some emulators, because of the aspect ratio. By pressing the power button, it will open the menu, and then you can change the volume, brightness and other settings. Here you can see that the aspect ratio is cropped. If you change to scaled, it will have the full picture, but then you will lose the pixel perfect image. By pressing select and down, you can quickly cycle between picture modes. And by pressing select, left and right, you can change the zoom scale in the zoom mode. I recommend playing with the cropped screen. Depending on the game, it won't affect much your gameplay. And one of the coolest things about the RG Nano is that if you want to stop playing, you can simply power down the device. This is not a sleep mode, it is completely powered off. And when you turn it on again, it will resume from the point that you left off. This is awesome because when you're outside, you don't have to worry about saving your game. And the console is completely turned off, which means that the battery won't get drained. With this, the RG Nano is the best pick and play console. You can take it with you and play whenever you feel bored, in a bank queue or waiting for your order in a restaurant. And when you exit the game, it will also keep track where you left off. So you can play something else and when you come back, it'll still resume your previous gameplay. The picture quality is perfect in some emulators as I've just shown, but it's not that good in some other emulators, like on Game Boy and Game Boy Color. Here you can see that the image is filtered, and there is no way to remove this filter, and in the picture modes you have only scaled and stretched. You can change it not even in the menus. And in some emulators like King Gear, you can't change picture modes at all.
Thankfully, Game Boy Advance has a pixel perfect mode. So you can play a thumb-sized version of Pokemon wherever you are. But where it really shines is with older consoles. With Master System games, you will get pixel perfect with minimal crops on the screen. The same applies for NES. and Super Nintendo games too. And impressively enough, this console can play PS1 games. And here's a more 3D intensive game, Metal Gear Solid. It's running without dropping a single frame, pretty impressive. On the RetroArch section, you have a few more emulators. And the difference here is that some emulators that had problems in the Emulators tab will end up working better here with RetroArch. In Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, you can change the screen aspect ratio.
and you can even turn this moving off. There's a few more emulator options too. And you can remap the buttons any way you want. But again, some emulators runs better and some runs worse, which is the case for the Game Boy Advance emulator. Now for a quick teardown, you have four screws on the back. After removing them, you can open the shell. And wow, what a big battery! You have a 150 milliamps battery. There is also some added weights here. And the board is pretty compact. Here's the switches for the shoulder buttons. And you have to remove 8 screws to flip the board. On the other side, we can see the high quality golden contacts for the buttons, as it is with all Embernic devices. And here you will see the tiny LED that will light up when charging. Here you can see the screen glued to the main board and the flat cable. And here's the rubber membranes for all of the face buttons. Funny enough, the button layout can be changed, but it's kinda useless on this device as you won't be playing Xbox games on it. Finally, I cut a screen protector and tried to apply it. And here you can see the problem that I mentioned. Thanks to the curved screen, the screen protector can't completely fit so I had to cut it more and leave the edges of the screen unprotected. For a console that will stay in your pocket for a long time, a screen protector is highly desired. It is a shame that Embernic didn't add one to this device. Well, this is not perfect, but it's better than nothing. And that's it for this review. At first, the RG Nano seems like a pointless device. The screen and buttons are very small, and why would you buy it if you have the 35XX at the same price? And while it definitely makes sense, the RG Nano still has its advantages. Being so small, it's easy to carry around, and with its quick boot up and auto save state feature, it's easy to pick up and play something and stop playing at any time, then resume whenever you need it without affecting the battery life at all. While other devices are bigger and better, who would be playing older games here? Most Game Boy and Game Boy Color games are very simple, the sprites are very big taking a lot of space on the screen and the stages are pretty short, so I never end up playing other games in my 353P. But with the RG Nano, I can play games in installments, play a little bit here, play a little bit there, and like this, the Game Boy, Game Boy Color, NES, Master System games are much more appealing. So in my final thoughts, if you're looking for a console to play games for a longer period of time, or play more complex games from the Super Nintendo and above, you should get something like the 35XX or other Embernic console. But if you want to play something really short here and there, the RG Nano is a good option, especially with older games. These games are more simple and easier to play with the tiny controls. On the pros, you have a system that has a good battery life, has a good screen, good audio, and extra multimedia functions with a premium build quality. On the cons, it gets a little warm when you're playing with the brightness on the max, 
The buttons will feel a bit cramped, so it's not very good to play complex games. And the screen is very small, so if you have trouble reading small texts, this console is not for you. And that's it for this review. If you liked this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a like or a comment. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.